welcome to another edition of our Return to Ramda cassette review. This is Evan Irwin. Here's Brad Nelson. You've been uh, with I us. I didn't get to say my own name. No, not in this one. No, Aww. sir. Today, our final day of the set review, we're going over all the Celestia cards. Yeah. It's going to be awesome because it's my favorite guild. Yes. And today, we are going to start with Celestia Charm. It's the last charm to talk about. Mm hmm. And it's awesome. I actually really like this one. It's oh, growing on me. It is so good. Yes, it is growing very good. on you. I, I I actually didn't really like it that much. It's insanely good. It's, what? I mean, okay, it's very good and limited. No, 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 yes. no. It's Just good no, and no, constructed. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? I, I don't think it's that good and constructed now. Why? But I think it's like the best charm in Limited by far. Oh my god, and like the blue-white green deck that has Geist of St. Traff, like this card is the actual stone blade. Uh, if my Geist gets plus two, plus two in Trample. I have actual other... Or I kill your stupid thing. I have or some I make really a sweet cards for the uh, the Geist deck. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. It's, it's coming. It's in the All Celestia right. Guild, but... But tell me why you don't like this very much in Constructed. Uh, Pump spells are pretty mediocre. Okay. A 2 2 is pretty mediocre. And a lot of the five power creatures gain value. Like it's either a Sigarda, which you can't kill, okay. or, or you're actually playing. All right. It's Thray Tusk, which they get a 3 3. So okay. killing a Thray Tusk doesn't really do anything. Uh, Worm is big. It doesn't really do anything. I, I mean, yeah. it kills a Thunder Moy Hellcat, but they still get the end of the battlefield trigger. Yeah. I get it. I mean, but at the same time, doesn't this feel like a, you know, the, the sum is greater than its parts type thing? All of these, like, you know, good, okay abilities, but together, pretty terrific <sighs> options. No, none of this does anything against zombies. That's the problem. It's not a good anti zombie card. Yeah, and zombies are such a major force now. I just, I love this card. It's, it's fine. Okay, it's very good. It's very, he doesn't play constructed anyway. We can lie to him. It's amazing, Evan. This is the best. It is. Card. I'm joking. Oh, man. It's the best card ever. You're lying to me, aren't you? I am lying to you. You're terrible. I am. God, but regardless, in limited, yes. Oh, by far, it's the best charm I by a mile. Terrific, amazingly limited. In yeah. constructed, you'll see. I will not see it. <sighs> you'll see. <laughs> you just wait. Now, Trostani's judgment. The scar. Six mana, like, wow. But it has instant, which is so oh. good. Oh, you're going to blow some people out oh, for kill. real. With like, this thing. Like, uh, what's that card called? Public execution? This is the yeah. white version. Oh. Kill a guy, make a token, block. Brr. Wreck your entire board. Taste it. Yes. Like, wow. This card, I mean, for six mana, you're getting all the values. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it so much. Yeah, limited awesome. Constructed no, limited awesome. Yes. Remember that. It's a limited awesome sandwich. And this card is terrible and limited, terrible and constructed. Oh, wait, no, this is Armada Worm. <laughs> <laughs> this card is nuts. Negative. Did you negative. guys like Titans? Would you like to play with one? I like this card because it is just the one Titan in the format. It's just a green white Titan. Yeah. Only Celestia gets the Titans. This card, wow, I can't it believe is. it. Like, here's how crazy it was. We, on the rumor mill, they had posted Armada Worm. And it was too crazy to pre-sell because we had to see the card yeah. to make sure it actually cost that little and actually did that much. 10 power for 6 mana. Couldn't do it, because I was like, really? Like, Broodmate Dragon is one thing. You yeah. know, Double Dragon, as they called it. But this thing, I mean, with all the Populate cards, with... Uh, yeah, with, with the Populate, I uh, think it's just way better. Like, now, Broodmate Dragon is a little bit better than this card. Because of Evasion, I get yes. it. Uh, but because of Populate and how this format looks, yep. and how ho difficult it's going to be to actually kill two five fives, this Man. card is retarded. This card, really really, really this card really is going to do an insane amount of work. It is works perfectly with the mechanic and uh, in terms of a chase mythic, right in the cube, right in all the EDH decks, right in, in absolutely some constructed decks, like this card will see tons of play. Why do both have to have trample? Yeah, because fatty boom booms, that's why. Because I just fat, fat. I, I don't I don't want a worm population theme. Oh, I want a worm population theme inside <laughs> your head. Call the conclave when Watch Wolf isn't enough. Just put it on a sorcery. Make it a token. Yeah. Make it work with the guild mechanic. Yeah, I really like this. And the funny thing is, is the first time I saw it, I was like, oh man, call the conflict. I can't kill it with ultimate price, but you can. Oh, it's just green. Yeah, it's only a green creature. <laughs> <laughs> Multicolor spell, monocolor dude. Yep. That's, That's kind okay. of unique. 
it's it's very unique. Yeah, um, it doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, I agree. Um, I love the art. Therese Nielsen is an absolute master, and you know, I think that you know, in terms of like, they didn't give us back Watch Wolf, and but I'm really glad. I'm actually super happy. This that is we, better than Watch Wolf. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. this just works 100 percent better with instead of reprinting Watch Wolf. The ability. Now Centaur Healer. I, I, I was just like, now A, Loxodon Hierarch had that second ability. You could sack yes. him, regenerate all your guys. I get that. But <laughs> just shave things off, all the all the card, yeah. and now it's a common? And like, curve it with Restoration Angel? What? This card is going to be very good as an anti-zombie card. Mm. They put a bunch of two power creatures to play, hit you, and then they play like a Dross Messenger, and you just play Centaur Hero and get back a lot of that value that was lost. Yep. This card is very good at anti-zombies, uh, as well as it's great with... Uh, Restoration Angel, I, I think it's going to be in a lot of green-white decks to yep. get you enough time to hit your Mata Worms. Right. In terms of being on the curve and doing what you wanted to do at that spot yep. versus all these incredibly super aggressive decks, like, it's great. Yeah. I was surprised. I couldn't believe there wasn't more sort of fanfare around it. Now, mm -hmm. Collective Blessing, you know, super, I want super. This, I want this card to be very good, but I don't know where it goes. I, yeah. I mean, there was the one from Scars that gave them all double yeah. strike, you know, three white, three colorless. Well, I think getting uh, plus three, plus three is just better. Oh, absolutely. Because it turns better. your mana guys into four damage instead of two with the double strike. Yep. But I just don't think it's going to see any constructive play. But it's like it, it's like a a casual player all star. It is a casual all star. It's like oh, Glorious Anthem is mm -hmm. plus one, plus one, but this is double as much mana, but it's plus three plus <gasps> That is value. So good. So like, those who play on kitchen tables, that's where this thing is going to shine yes. the brightest. And I think that's awesome. Now, Common Bond, you're putting counters. Counter, 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 counter. No. Counter, counter. No. You give me that back. I know you took it away from me, but I want it back. Give it back to me. Why do you gotta back. have the no button? N O. Because travel preparation was like my favorite card ever. Oh, you got spoiled. No, I got awesome. You got spoiled is what you got. Travel prep was so good, and now this one is just kind of meh. I just went to travel prep, man. Travel man. Prep, man. No, man. Common Bond is an instant. Yeah, it's actually really cool. Two different creatures at instant speed. Yeah. What, what about Seeds of Strength? Seeds of Strength is good, but, man, this thing is just built to make blowouts. You know what the common bond between that weird, like, rat thingy and that duder is? They're both kicking ass. That's what they're well, doing. Well, all I feel is you're going to have the most amazing relationship when you put common bond on two soul bond creatures. I <laughs> just love it because the Japanese don't have the word soul bond. So yeah. in, at Pro Tours and Grand Prix, they just kept going, make, make relationship. relationship. Yeah. So it's you so just funny. made a relationship. Shoot, and I, I play a game against <laughs> you and he's like, make relation. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> That's the best <laughs> phrase ever, and I've used it ever since, and every single time. And because it's uh, another guy brought rings to the Pro Tour. Oh, my and God. And he put red rings and blue rings on all the oh, It wow. was so cool. That's adorable. So, Consor's Accord, or Corsor's Accord, rather. Six mana. Six power. Yeah. It's good. Oh, gosh. You're going to do some work with this card. It's You're going to play this in Limited. It, it looks, because it's populate, it, mm. they kind of look weird. It's like, oh, put a 3-3 three, three into play, but you have to look at the populate. It is two three threes for six mana, not the worst. It can be better than that, though. It's like as if, it's, it's. I mean, the way to sort of wrap your head around is if you would pay six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Yes. And that's more or less what you're getting here, except it's just within two creatures. And that's, Most of the time is better. Yeah, absolutely. It, it gives you the flexibility yeah. of blocking two guys. It lets you attack both at the same time. It lets you use common bond. To make it doesn't four, die four. to removal. Yeah. It doesn't, and, you know, one single one doesn't die to removal. Yes. You still have something left, and that is very, very powerful. Yeah, this card is much better than a 6-6 six, six for 6. Absolutely. So, in limited, yeah. For sure. Nowhere else. Druid's Deliverance. Now, I, this card, I have seen this in some of the sort of the, the decks that people have been writing about. Yeah. You know, I was like, really? I, I, was, well, I had to read yeah, it again. It's a cheap populate. It is very cheap populate. For a fog... Mm. What? No, it's awesome. Is it really good? I think because you get a populate. I think because like Armada Worm exists, like this thing is just like, wow. Well, it's just like you make a 3-3 three, three attacking with it, they take you back and you're like, you know, popu fog you. populate Fog and get you it. get a 3-3 three, three and attack you again. Like you can, you can stop all of the bleeding on turn 3 and make another guy. 
Right. I think, I think it's good. Yeah, my, my problem, I think, is that I, I just, I really want to make them sort of suffer for them attacking into me, you know? Like, I want to populate at instant speed and then block their guys, but that doesn't actually work. No. Because it's going to prevent all the damage, of course. So, like, yep. th I think that's sort of the, the disconnect for me. I'm just like, I, but I want to make the dudes to kill their dudes. I don't want to make the dudes just to make the dudes. But ultimately, it gives you both the tempo and the guys. Yeah, this, this card's awesome. They alpha strike you. you prevent, next time they alpha strike you and you prevent all the damage and get lethal on board, you're going to like it. You're going to feel good. You're going to feel good about yourself. Now, Dryad Militant, another terrific card from Therese Nielsen in terms of artwork and in terms of the card itself. Just keep making those jungle lines and savannah lines yeah. be outclassed. It's cool. Yeah, I think having yeah two on, it can be green, it can be white. It has a great ability. Like, screw you, attack. Snapcaster. Mm-hmm. Like, they really, unveiler rights doesn't really work. It is adorable how Wizard is just, like, really terribly trying to make Snapcaster bad. Like, yeah. They <laughs> it just was just unleashed on the format. Do you know that if you play a removal spell and kill this guy, hmm, and then Snapcaster, it, hmm. 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 Now the thing is that because of the way that the stack works, like if you burn it, it's exiled. Tragic Slip or Burn doesn't kill it. Yeah, it gets exiled. But if right. you Doomblade it, it goes to the graveyard. Yeah, there's there's weird like stack things, and I think that's sort of the problem with any cards that read like mm -hmm. this is that there's this sort of disconnect as to what goes to the graveyard and what doesn't go to the graveyard yeah. when you kill it. And it really does differ in terms of how you kill it, which is awkward. But ultimately, as a card, I don't think it's going to do what it might be sort of advertised to do. Like, I don't think Snapcaster decks are going to be like, oh, man, you play no. the Dryad Milith and I'm in big trouble. I, I just like this card because it can block a zombie mm. on turn one. You and them zombies. You guys will see, come Cincinnati, how good Zombies is. I think Zombies are going to be terrific, but I think the problem is that you haven't mentioned any of the deck type. Because there isn't a different deck type. <laughs> We've tried. Wait. We've tried. Oh, there is. You know there is. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. It's just zombie, mono Zombies format. No, there'll be people trying to beat Zombies, but they won't. <laughs> I like Dryad Milton. For what it's worth, I think it's a cool card. Yeah. I want it to be really great. I don't know if it is. Now, Eyes in the Skies, as an instant. Yeah, this card is sweet. Wow. Put a 1-1 one, one into play, and at worst, put another 1-1 one, one into play. Yeah, and probably at best, yeah, obviously copying our Modern Worm tokens, but ultimately, you know, just even Because we need a follow-up. <laughs> I always need a follow-up, dude. What's better than winning? Winning more. That's what we need. Winning again before you win. Yes. Yes, win, 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 win. And Eyes in the Skies <laughs> is an awesome card. I love it. You're like, bonfire you. In response, Karn Ultimate. Mm. I want to do it again. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> so Eyes in the Skies has a card. Limited, terrific. Yes. Standard? No. <laughs> It's no. just four mana for two one one birds is not enough. No. But in limited, you're getting all the value. Yes. You're going to get have all the crazy board states that will allow this card to really, yep. really shine. And in instant speed, man, it's going to mess up all kinds of stuff. Yeah, this card's very good. This card's awesome. Now, Grove of the Guardian. I like this card, but I still, in standard, don't know what you do. Do you play this or do you play Township? Do you play both? Oh, I don't you know. know you play Township. Maybe. Insane. I know, especially if it's creatures on creatures. Right. But this card is so threatening. It's so good, and it's pushed and all, but it can be chump blocked, and it yeah. has a little of that sort of the, the convoke feel, mm -hmm. where you have to tap the creatures yep. and pay all the mana to do the stuff. And, you know, you're putting an 8-8 creature with vigilance. That's a, that's kind of important. Like, you know, it's yeah. important to have a huge monster to just, like, get you. Like, get you. It's always mm -hmm. going to be able to block and just get you over and over again. Yep. It is their sort of their guild leader, I mm -hmm. guess. It's just weird. It's their guild leader land thing. But yeah, you know. that is very strange that their guild leader is a land. It's so That's weird. It's kind of awkward, to be why, honest. Why couldn't they? Well, I mean, I guess because there's no, like, they don't want to do Armada Worm or Tristani because they're mythics. And, and the, yeah, they're just insane. Like, yeah, I mean, they've sort of stopped giving away mythics for pre release things. I think you're going to see Selesnya be one of the least favorite uh, guilds. guilds just for the fact that it's like, I get a land? I get a land, really? And Why? like my land and like the you know, the problem is that you only have like one guy out and you have like a bunch of mana. You're just like if you only I have can't one guy make out, my awesome dude. If you get guy. a pack of Selesnia and you only have one guy out and you're popular you you have a bad pool. Well you have a bad pool, but also they could have had a lot of removal and they could yeah. have just been trading. You'll get to this point I think where this card can bring you frustration, whereas all the yeah. other guild leaders, if you have their mana cost, you have value. Yep. And I think that's a little rough. Now growing ranks 
I like how I love how Wizard spoils cards. I think that there's a lot of there's a there's an art to spoiling cards. Now before, you know, like the people crack boxes and post stuff all over the internet, whatever. Like in the times before anybody gets any product, they're very selective yeah. with how they sort of let things go. Mm -hmm. For example, um, and back before New Phyrexia got completely busted uh, and sort of spoiled, there was Flex Phyrexia and Obliterator. Remember yeah. when that hit? Yeah. And everyone was like, OMG, like mono black is the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like that thing hit like a thirty dollar pre order, man. Like it was nuts, man. People were just like, "This card is heralding the new mono black," and blah yep. blah 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 blah. And here's just full spoiler that has dismember in it. Yep. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so wizards, I felt uh, they busted out this card early in the spoiler season because like really no token no creators have been made. Populate, Our yeah. mono worm hadn't been spoiled at all yet, yeah. and they were just like, yeah, you know, just go ahead and imagine ideas with it. And every, you know, like every review was just like same with Ice in the Skies that got early, and everyone's like two birds. I'm like, you guys know what populate is. It's not make the token that that card that makes, that made right? right any. And so like yeah, this is a card that. You know, has potential. Yeah, I, I like. I feel like certainly in limited, you're going to be able to just destroy with the popular deck. I, I want to play with this in like a crazy casual format when mm -hmm. you're like when you use that cackling counterpart mm -hmm. and you do some weird things like. That's what things. I want to do. Yeah, cackling counterpart is definitely what I want to be doing with this card. And you know, in in EDH and casual decks, like I think you're just going to love this thing to death. To be able to build your car, your deck around this card, you're going to have a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Absolute ton of fun. They give you a lot of tools too. Uh, Heroes Reunion. Why is it uncommon? Why is it uncommon? It's a reprint. It's cool. It's a reprint. Yeah, it's from Invasion. Oh, they made it twice. They made they made it twice. Ugh. Oh, oh. Uh, at Uncommon? Sometimes Are you crazy wizards? you make a soup and you go, eh, let's try again. And then you make the soup and you go, maybe that was as good as it got. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did not know where you were going, but that was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My soup metaphor is for magic cards. <laughs> but the, you know, Heroes Reunion as, as a card, I mean, you know, it can take you back. It can, it can help the tempo swing. I think there is a reason they made it Uncommon, which is like you... Oh, come on. No. Primal Command, one of the cool things about Primal Command was you go search for a creature, gain seven, time walk your opponent with that seven life that you just gained. Well, you gained advantage by searching your library for any creature you wanted. All right, all right. <laughs> it's probably not worth a card to gain seven life, but it's still good. It's also just two mana. Like, you know, I grew up in a world... You know, when the rocks back were soft. Back in my day. Back in my day, when I walked uphill both ways, all we had was a spring of life. Come on, we didn't walk uphill. We know that. Come on. When I rode uphill <laughs> both ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So Horn Collar's Chant is where the 4-4 Rhino token gets seen. And that is where we populate. It's eight mana for eight power. With trample. Woo! Woo! This card is awesome. It's getting gross. Like when when you don't <laughs> open the Armada Worms, like Horncaller's Chant is right behind. Well, yeah, and it, because it's common, you're going to see a lot of them. But I don't think it's going to see a ton of play unless it's dedicated. But there's no ramp in the set, really. That's your problem. There's yeah. not a lot of ramp. There's not a lot there's, of mana guys. There's like four mana to put them in your hand, but you're not ramping. You're you're putting lands into your hands to help you get to this point in the game. But eh. for the most part, I think I think there's a wall that adds mana. Well, there's the old wall that finds a gate or a land. Remember? Yeah. That one, and that card's cool and all, but it, it doesn't really ramp because it just puts it in your hand. So like, all, all, all we're saying is that you know, ultimately you're not gonna be able to sort of rush into this, yeah. but at the top of your curve, at the absolute top of your curve, you know, this card will affect the board in a major oh, yeah. way. It's, it's a very powerful card. Eight mana for eight power. You know, with trample. The, the weirdest thing about these populate cards is the higher they go on the curve. The less of a chance that you're going to populate something that's not yeah, on that card. Anything else. Like yeah. that card just basically says, populate what I just did. Now, Unless eyes you need to jump a flyer right. with Eyes in the Sky. Yeah, absolutely. So the Loxodon Smiter. Uh, do cards get pushed? Hmm. The cards get pushed. Hmm. I'm not sure. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, this card is ridiculous. Man. Three mana. For a 4 4, it can't be countered. Like, it's so if good. They make you discard it. Oh. Oh. oh, it's so good. I don't know why. It's just. I just, you know, I want to be, I want to live in a world where I'm playing a legacy match and they Inquisition of Kozilek and I have Land Land Smiter. Because you mauled the three? Sure. 
<laughs> I don't care. I just want it to happen. I want to make them fix the spider. <laughs> or just like, you know, land, land, spider, and a bunch of six costs. Why would you play this in Legacy? I, it can't be countered. Why can't it's they a just be playing a discard deck I'll in Standard? I'd probably just play a Knight of the Reliquary in Legacy. But regardless, in Standard, they're going to rack those return. Like, that's going to be a card. That's going to be a thing. They're this gonna is going to be... They're going to play anything else on the power curve, and this is bigger than it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play this turn two and start hitting them hard. Good, 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 good. <laughs> four, well, four, it, three. yeah, it's a four, four, three, which is ridiculous. But like, I know, and I think a lot of people sort of already suspected that it's not going to happen at first. But there's going to be a point where the format turns into I cycle Cyclonic Rift, and I Rakdos return your stuff away. <laughs> no, it's not. Why not? Because there's. So many two powered one ones. You are just so convinced that like this is the most aggro format that's ever existed. Like control will happen. No, it like, won't. Yes, it will. You know it will. No, I don't. Look at the cards that are in Magic. There's no real good card advantage. All the card advantage spells get eaten up by the graveyard hate that everyone has to play. Even zombies has main deck graveyard hate. Okay. It has the most resilient creatures ever. So then the way to beat the resilient creatures is to play cards like Locks and Smiter, and like Dead Dead Bridge Troll. And Sagarda, which Sagarda is not only good against zombies, but destroys control decks. Sagarda is going to be sick. I get that. I agree with you. But I, what I'm saying is that you keep describing this world where control decks don't exist, and I'm telling you they're going to because they no, can't. No, people not. will play them. People will play them. Doesn't yes. mean that they're good. Your definition of good in mind, buddy. All right. So for what it's worth, Lockstone Smiter is amazing in all formats. He's yes, really good. Very, very good. Very crazy good. Here's the Risen Sanctuary. Here is what you just had on your Grove of the Guardian land. Yeah. But for seven mana straight up instead of five mana tap two guys. Like, exact same. Eight, eight, it eight, is, eight, yeah, eight, eight vigilance. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, not to be a prick, but why don't you just make this guy the, the guild leader? It's, it's what the land turned into anyway. Well, the land is, like, cooler, right? Yeah, well, the land's supposed to be cooler, but I think, again, like, what you see on this, on that pre-release sheet, you know, you saw, like, the four leaders yep. and this land, and you're like... Well, they but, couldn't but, do this because that would be really awkwardly embarrassing. I still think the land is awkwardly embarrassing. I think the land is awkward. And what I'm saying is, I'm not saying this is better, per se, but I'm saying no. it's at least a guy yeah. that you can look at. You know, as a player, you're just like, yeah. oh, dude, 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 land. Like, what? I gotta jump through hoops to get this thing to yeah. work. All these other guys are awesome all by themselves. Yeah, it is, does seem weird that the one card that has like no abilities is the most complex to get into play. Yeah, it's just a duder guy who's large. And for what it's worth, this guy will see well, play in The limited. reason that it is going to be good though is I think, well the problem is I think a lot of people at the pre-release are going to just play 16 lands in it right? instead of playing 17 lands in it. Sure. And like that extra land is going to help you cast all your populate cards and then it or do it and then populate cards. Right, well I was going to say like you need like Wait, five no, you mana. Want, no, you don't want this because you can't populate, duh. Well, we want to make a token. We want to make an 8-8 Vigilance token then populate a million times. We want to make an 8-8 Vigilance token. I'm not saying you don't, I'm just saying that I, It like, makes, ah, Wizards, I know what you did there. I actually figured it out. Grove is actually the best card to p give everyone because they want to populate an 8-8 a million times. I get that. I don't. I didn't. <laughs> well, no, no. What I'm saying is, I get now that you explain it. I, yeah. What I'm saying is, I understand that, you know. But I think the problem is that, like, just perception-wise, it's cool dude, cool dude, cool dude land. And like, yes, it works with the 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 mechanic, but, that's but people it. don't it's understand because it's the public. No, they will understand it because we told them. Well, I hope so. But but it, that was the last week. Yeah. But now people are like, oh, I should have been Celestia. Dude. Or they're gonna be like, I got run over by Celestia because the guy made a token and populated yeah. it to death. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. That's awesome. I love that as the card everyone gets. I dig it. I want to be Celestia now. Yay! Risen Sanctuary, tell me. What am I supposed to say about a 7 mana 8 8 with Vigilance? You're supposed to tell me how good it is in limited and constructed. If you cast it, it's probably going to be good, but it costs 7 mana. It costs 7 mana, and like, that's a lot. A 7 mana is a ton in limited, especially when I want the like my 7 and 8 drops to be like the Rhino pr proliferate, or, or not proliferate. Right, uh, the, the populate. Rhino populate, yeah. yeah. And it, it seems okay. It's going to be at the top of your curve. Mm. It's going to be if, like, if you cast it, it will be huge, and your opponent will be scared of it. But it's just another guy. Kinder catchish kind of thing. Yeah. It's just like pour a bunch of mana into a huge dork. Yeah. Um, don't play in constructed. No. Rootborn defenses. Now wizards, come on. I am in no way convinced that this was accidentally included in an M13 pack. D no. No. I've been I've been doing this too long. Wait, and that's what they said? Oh yeah. They just snuck it into an M13 pack? Yeah, yeah. No, no. It was an accident. 
Oh, you should see it. It was hilarious. Like Mara what was happened? just like Mark Rosewater was just like, um, you know, like there's there's cards and like the hoppers. Literally, he's talking about hoppers. Wait, wait, wait! I didn't hear the story. <laughs> no, he wrote, Tell me the story. I didn't hear this. Yeah, he wrote about it in his uh, in one of his recent articles, which talked about you know return of Ravnica design, and he said that you know well sometimes in the, the the card printing business you know new cards from the new set will get you know put into an old set accidentally because cards can get like stuck in the hoppers. <laughs> That's when I knew, by the way. That's exactly, you start talking about hoppers as a game designer, this was intentional. It was intentionally leaked. They just so wanted to put it in just so people get excitement. To, yeah. yeah, to build excitement, to get people talking, to, to, to get people guessing. You know, that's part mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. And, and they like to have fun with their player base. They like to sort of see if they can sneak in this or hide that yeah. or put this in an article or like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just like, just drop all these hints that don't make a lot of sense until later on down the line. And you're just like, oh, obviously. And you couldn't help but like sort of play along. Right, this guy posts a picture of it, and everyone calls him like a faker. And why are you doing this? And blah blah blah. And the more you read it, you're just like, you know, this actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and like that sense. art doesn't like accidentally make its way out. No. And the wording was too good, and mm -hmm. you know the whole bit, and just, everything about it looked perfect. Yeah, exactly. And so eventually, we sort of came around to the thing, and it was real. And then Wizards, uh, the guy sent in the card to Wizards. And then they uh, like sent him back uh, like a Celestia guild banner oh, signed cool. by the development team. Oh yeah, it was awesome. Wow. Yeah, and, so then, cool. and like the card itself was signed by Eric Lauer because Eric how, Lauer designed how many, it. How many times have they done this? When just a random kid goes and buys a pack, takes it home, opens, he's like, "This rip and defense card is good. I'm going to go play with it," and does not know it's not from the set. Right? Doesn't even notice. I wonder if they've done that before. They could very well have. I mean, I think that in this world of super hyper social media, whatever that, you know, I don't how think that's happened. No, how many people don't even know like that we exist? There's so many Magic players that don't. It it. It, it's There's more magic yeah. being sold by like Walmart than Star yeah, City exactly, Games has yeah. ever thought about. Like, you know, it's just it's true. So like Rootborn defenses could have been spoiled a hundred times over and we wouldn't have known about mm -hmm. it until some guy who like were you know, went and bought the pack at a game store, which is what happened. Yeah. You know, just found it. And so ultimately that story is cute as hell. Um Rootborn Defenses, however, cool card. I like it a lot. All I right. actually liked it a lot more mind than Mindblown, you want mind blown? Okay. Attack you with Geist. <sighs> Oh, that's dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so dirty. That's what I want to do with this card. I want to attack with Geist. Oh. Put an angel into play. Oh. Keep, make my guy into circle. keep the angel? Yes. <laughs> oh, that is so disgusting. <laughs> Next turn, attack with two angels. Play Snapcaster. Rootborn Defenses. Oh, <laughs> get out. All I'm saying, yeah, this card, I, I mean, I know it doesn't <laughs> look like a constructed card, but I think it actually is. I think uh, this card is sweet. It works better with... it. Okay, so you attack with a Geist. Right. They block, you go Restoration Angel. Right. Reborn Defenses with Geist is better than Restoration Angel. This is Because you make a 4-4 four, four and you keep your guy alive. Yep. And you just get a 4-4. Four, four. And if they block uh. with a 2-2, two, two, you kill the 2-2. Oh! This card is so good. This card has actual super potential. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, I now think I'm way more excited about it. Just because it, oh, because it makes Geist good again. <laughs> it makes Snapcaster. So hard. It makes Snapcaster and Geist playable again. Yeah, because they were so I'm, crappy before. <laughs> Man, now they can come back in the meta game. But I, I would be le less. I'm less excited because that's what's going to happen to me. Oh well, well, no, no, it's not a zombie deck, so no one's going to play it, right? Hmm. Dagger, dagger. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> Every set, I'm like, yeah, I'll come work with you, Evan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he just like makes fun of me in my training post and my. Too much pain. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. Celestia so Guildgate, no constructed uses, but man, awesome and limited. Yes. And that artwork, wow. Yeah, there. The art's very good this this time. Howard Lyon, you win. That is terrific. Every once in a while, I'll look through the old sets on Moto when I'm bored and just like look at how cards were designed. Because mm -hmm. like I don't know a lot of the cards from like Arabian Nights and things like that. Like I know Desert exists. Sure. But that's the only card I know from Arabian Nights. Oh man, I'm sorry. Because well, because well, the, the designs were so like atrocious. Well, but yeah, I look back at that and like the cards are pretty bad. And like the art is just, it's fine, but not for, it, art Art for games has been pushed a lot. It's been pushed, it's also sort of like the digital revolution that happened. Yeah, and it's, so, that it's so easy for me to like insult someone on their like ability to judge magic cards and like that, but I, I feel so bad insulting an artist. I can't say yeah. the art was bad. Yeah, I mean, like, it's even, oh, I mean, I guess Drew Tucker is sort of like the, the punching boy, or sort of like the whipping boy in terms of, like, art that people get beat up on, but yeah. just look at, like, for example, you guys at home, go look up 7th edition. 
Seventh uh-huh. edition for me was just like the actual Nutlow. It yeah. was when they went like comic book style mm-hmm. and it was like heavy line work. If you artists at home know what I'm talking about, like it's just, oh, it's just like magic as a comic book and it does not work. Like no. it's just no. And it is all no. And look at seventh edition Land of War Elves. Oh, they're so bad. And so, and that's also one of the reasons seventh edition foils are insanely expensive. <laughs> Because so no bad. one bought it. Oh, <laughs> it's so bad. Like, uh, I don't want. To, I don't want to buy these cards. It's terrible. So you know, but you look at something like Celestia Celest- Celest- Guildgate, and it really makes you just go, "Wow!" And yeah, I feel like I'm in this pops. world. You know? Yeah. I like mean, I want to be there. Yeah, on the steps in front of mm-hmm. this amazing gate with this really cool thing at the top. It's just yeah. beautiful. Like, absolutely amazing. So the key rune is next. Celestia key rune turns into a. I like how it turns into a wolf, by the way, which is Why? sweet because the watch wolf. Because uh, it's, it's basically the watch wolf on a key rune. Oh. Uh, it's got uh, a little, you can see the little wolfy head guy there. It does have a wolfy head. head. That's cute. <laughs> it looks like Star Fox. Uh, a little bit. I'll give you Star Fox. And I just, you know, it's certainly one of the better key runes. Yes. I, I like the Death Touch one a little bit more. I agree. Um, and I, but the reason that the Celestian Key Room, I think, is actually going to be very good mm-hmm. is because not only can it become a 3 3 and attack sometimes mm-hmm. in the game, but you need to hit those high mana costs. Uh, yeah, I can see There's that. a lot of big For popular Celestia? mana costs. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were already looking at like an 8 mana mm-hmm. one. We've seen like the 7 mana, 8 8 Vigilance guy. Like, you know, yeah. you need the manas. Yes. And this is one of the only ways you can really get it. Mm-hmm. So as a key rune, terrific. So yeah. Celestia Sentry, 3 mana, 3 2 with upside. Yeah, here's another one of those cards, like I said earlier, that at the beginning of the game it's good. At the late game it has some type of ability. That's why I really like this card. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you're just going to trade with it early on, but once you get to late game, you're like, all right, I got free mana. I guess I'm going to do something with it. Right, and they want you to give, you know, again, mana sinks late in the yep. game. You want to have something to do, you know? Like mm-hmm. when you top deck a land, you want to have something to do on the board, you know, whether it's a key rune, you turn to a guy, or you regenerate this guy, or whatever. You know, we'll get to the guild, yep. the guild mage here soon where you can sort of pump mana into that too, which is terrific. Um, you know, it's something to do. And I think this guy <laughs> in limited will be absolute uh, role player status and... Yep. And constructed never, but you know it doesn't need mm-hmm. to be. No, nope. just a good role player. Sundering growth. That's my naturalized baby. Whoop! Wow! Make a token. Yeah, this card is very good. I like that they made a naturalized that costs a little bit more. Or a disenchant naturalized that's a little bit more difficult to cast on both sides of it. Yep. But with a populate, like populate is going to be good for this card. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might even see some play because if they push out naturalize and disenchant, you and mean we like in constructed? Any, yeah, if, yeah. If we need that kind of effect, even if you don't have populate, hmm. but uh, I definitely think like I, I, I really like this card. I think this card could see constructive play. I think it could absolutely. Yeah. Like you know, a, a good. It's, it's a very pushed naturalized. Effect. Yes. Like if you're already playing naturalized type effects or whatever, mm-hmm. you're probably going to have double green or double white or some kind. Especially if you have any tokens in your deck, like yeah. it's just great. Yeah, basically, you know, you're playing the populate mm-hmm. deck, right? You know, and just like kill that and copy my whatever is just value. Yeah, I don't know if I would main deck this even if you're populating in uh, like limited, just for the fact that you don't know. There's not that a ton of ways to turn it on. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it's certainly for the sideboard, absolutely. I don't think you want to risk the, the, the chance of it just sort of being a dead yeah. card in your hand. They play Rakdos and you're just like looking at this thing the whole time, doing nothing. Now there's Temple Garden. Oh. Yay! For me, I swear. I love I, the art. I thought the art, I thought that was a little face. You see the little smiley face? Once you, once you see the smiley face it underneath this, you can never unsee it. I don't see a smiley face. Oh, yeah. You see the little eyes? The eyes are right there underneath the limbs of the tree. No, why'd you do that to and me? Why'd little you do face with a smile that's in. You're done. You're ruined. Ah, you Why did you do it. it to me? I didn't even see it. Now I don't want to. Why'd yep. you have to ruin it? And now it's the happy tree. It's it the is happy, the happy so tree. tree. It is just large as tough. It's not and now happy tree. You ruined the art for me. Now <laughs> I like the old one. I love this one, but now I just see a smiley face. All I see is the smiley face happy tree. <laughs> well, you know. No, actually, I lo- like. I definitely like over the old Overgrown Tomb, but I love the new Temple Garden. It's it is just, really Yeah, good. it's so good. Yep. And, you know, Bob Ross would approve with his happy little trees. <laughs> Approve with the art he drew? <laughs> no, what? No. no, no, I'm talking about Bob oh. Ross the painter. You know, the, the guy, the, he did the joy of painting. And he used to talk about happy little trees. No, you don't, I don't and know. And he had a big is. fro. I'm going to stop. 
Everybody home knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, I think I have heard Google it. it. Yeah, yeah, I think I have. All right. So Trostani sounds like a delicious Italian dish is up next. Now I'm hungry for it. Try Italian. our delicious Trostani. <laughs> Stay as crunchy and it's in your oven, it's in your grocery fridge. And if you don't eat it fast enough, it'll multiply. <laughs> it sure will. Yeah. Like, oh my God, Trostani, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> There's a coupon at starsagames.com. So Trostani is one of the cards that was yes. super underrated. Oh, yeah. Okay. It came out bulk rare. Yeah, and now it's pumped, right? Oh yeah, now it's gone up like ten bucks or something. Yeah, uh, abrupt decay mm -hmm. and mortars doesn't kill it. Yep, it's going to gain you a ton of value later in the game. Every spell you play, you're gaining life. You're gaining life, and you're able to populate to gain yes. more life. Populate to gain more get life. Get more board presence. So it just gets out of control. I think like this card alone makes me know that Victim of Night will see play. Hmm. It makes me just know that for a fact. That any zombie deck is going to play Victim of Night. Wow. They have to have they a way to They have kill this to thing. have, yeah, because if this thing starts rolling, the game's over. So, again, you want it to be Victim of Night and not just murder, right? Too slow? I, I, yeah, I want two mana. Okay. It, the, the importance are like the turns when you sign in blood into a removal spell. You don't want to have to have four, three, three mana up. That's fair. Okay, I was just trying to sort of wrap my head around like, is it really that big of a deal? But in terms of like you have going have back speed, and forth, yeah. yeah. On their turn four, when they play Trostani, like you have to untap and kill, kill it. it. Yes, <laughs> you have to kill it dead. Yep. Because they untap with her, it's going to get ugly. Yeah, it's going to get real ugly. And I mean, it's gl I'm glad she dies to, <coughs> to tragic slip as well. Yeah. So you can do some tragic slip games, but yeah. but the card is very good. I don't know the best way to build with it. I think you want. I don't know. Armada Worm might be good with this card, obviously, because you gain 10. Armada Worm is good with itself. Let's yeah, face it. but I think you want to more design this card around just being a good 4-drop and yep. not over-relying on its ability because it can just generate advantage. Like, you play the Centaur, the Mega 3-3, three, three, right. and you play uh, Thrag Tusk. Sure. And maybe a couple other um, ways to make tokens, but for the most part, I think those are, like, the big ones. Yep. I think that, yeah, again, for me, like, Trostani was one of those where it was, again, it was spoiled very early, and I think, you know, very, uh, you know, deliberately so. They like to just sort of roll out their mm -hmm. good cards and not give you, like, everything. You know, yep. sort of not sort of spell it all out for you. If there was, if they had first unveiled Armada Worm, and then unveil Trostani, like, you know, it would have been the exact opposite. That would have been like a chase rare from the absolute get-go, just like our modern yeah. one would be. So they're both with it. Instead, like, they sort of, you know, make a little puzzle for people to figure mm -hmm. out. Just be like, this card is actually terrific. Now, yeah. Vitu Ghazi Guild Mage, he's a good man. This card, okay, so Slesnia Guild Mage used to Ooh. be one of my favorite cards. If, if you didn't kill it, it just got out of hand. Yep. But there's just one thing I hate about this card more than anything. Why? Why is it a six mana effect above a four mana effect? Why can't you say four mana populate, six mana make a three three? Because people are like, oh, you make a three three, then you populate. Yeah. But it, it just it, it tilts me so much that it's six mana to four. When all of them are like small into big. You know what? Of all the things I'm going to complain about, that's not going to be one of them. Not going to be it. Really? That's you don't you don't that doesn't drive you crazy not seeing a bit. six into four. It, it doesn't make me happy, but like I mean, it's just the card is sweet. This card does everything you want it to do, man. Like this is a card that just really rewards mana flood. To be yeah. honest, like it's just like oh, I've got eight mana. Well, I've got any token ever. Populate, populate. You know. Yeah, I definitely feel like a lot of these uh, Selesnya decks are going to want like eighteen lands. Yeah. Because you definitely can't miss your land drops because you miss out on so many like value spells. Everything Celestia is incredibly mana intensive yeah. and should not be forgotten. But this guy, I mean, when you compare him to the original Celestia Guild Mage, like, I think, again, the abilities are more expensive in some ways, uh, but it's very powerful. Yep. A colon next to those abilities is really, really good. Now, Wayfaring Temple is a card that I just really, really want to be good. I really do. I think it will be. I think it just gets out of control. They just force to jump it all the time. Right. It just, it feels, <clears throat> and forgive me, I'm going to go a little, uh, it feels a little Night of the reliquary -ish. It feels a little like it just keeps getting scarier. No. It keeps getting scarier. It, 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 if it hits them, it gets really scary. But ultimately, like, all you're going to be doing with a Celestia deck is just like token, 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 It token, relies token. on other abilities where a knight does his own thing. That's knight the is his own thing. engine. I get that. And Knight does way more powerful things, right? And Knight has always been good because you have all the utility lands from the other formats, mm -hmm. and you have like you had Elspeth, 
that would like you'd sack, 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 just throw throw it in the air and kill them. Right. So like night right now probably wouldn't be as good as it was then. Well, I mean, yeah, I also remember when night first came out. Like it was one of those cards that I, I was like, man, like the potential mm -hmm. is really really big here. But at the time, you know, there was uh, there were no. Uh, let's see, it was in what set did that come out in? Um, Conflux. Conflux. All right. So there were no um, there there were no man lands at that point. There was certainly no fetch lands at that point, and it just felt like wow, this card has a lot of potential. And to me, if this card could get trample in some way, it could be insanely terrific. And if token generators keep getting good uh, throughout the block, I just just saying, this card makes me go. Hmm. <coughs> Rain card. Rain <coughs> Populate. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you go Centaur into this guy, into Rancor this guy. Oh, come and on. And hit them with your X2 and they block, and then you go Centaur, I guess? Well, I mean, you do stuff. And things. And things. To and guys. Stuff. All right, ultimately, limited? Yeah. All -star. We're, we're very good at limited. Constructed? No. I'm giving it an A. You're giving it an A because you like Magic Christmas Land. I, I do, but there's nothing wrong with that. Y y yes, there is. All right, fine. Well, we're moving on to our green cards, okay? We're going to start with Archweaver. Reach, Trample. Why does it not have a bigger butt? It's a spider. It's supposed it to have a bigger lie. butt. Those, those are hips, buddy. Not butts. Hips. I don't get it. I. It's weird. You know what I don't get is why there's a spider in the set, yet the gi giant spider card that costs giant spiders mana is not a spider. Hmm. But they get, they made spiders. I was like, oh, there's no spiders. And then I saw Archweaver. I'm like, oh, they lied to me. Dirty, dirty. Uh, I mean, I actually really like this card. It has reach and trample. So yep. like, it's just a huge spider. So it can block. But when it gets on the offensive, it's really aggressive. It's pretty scary on the yep. aggressive. And just on the on the defense, like, you know, your opponent has to find a way around this spider. Yeah. Like, it does both things. It's both scary on the aggressive and good but, on the defensive. But I have one more argument. Okay. If it has trample, that means it's huge and it's scary and the ground rumbles. That's what trample to me is. If, <laughs> if a card has trample, that means the ground shakes when it does anything. Okay. That is the stupidest person alive that's going to get eaten by the spider that tramples. Well, I mean, did he really not notice the spider? He doesn't. But did he really not, like, look up to the huge monstrous thing He's in the archway? Right he would be running. Y you'd or think. he'd be doing this. I think that's the classic, like, I'm going to get eaten by a spider pose. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever the spiders come, you have to do this. Yeah. It's just, it's it's guaranteed. I mean, I am such a chicken. That's what I do when there's a spider out on my balcony. <laughs> I see it, I'm like, no, 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 in my bathroom. <laughs> you know, I'm going to die. So, in limited, good. Yes? Yeah. Great. Yeah, in limited, I think it's very good. Not so much. Not that, that one I'll give an absolute no. Uh, Axe Bane Stag. There's so many big mana cost spells. They're so huge. They're just like big dorks. It's like two, two, three, seven. Seven. <laughs> I did the butt. Like, okay, a huge friggin' elk. Yeah, all the other cards I think are just better than this one. Like, I'd rather play the 5-5. Five five, like, the... I just don't... See this being like I just see this being a big pass out. I, see, I, I think I'm going to see this a lot at the end of my draft. Yeah, this will be the 14th. You're just like ah. This card, however, is business. It is fine if you play through colors. This is the card that lets you play through colors, as well as you want to run it in the green, blue, uh, like white, like Manty. mill deck. The the mill deck with the defenders. Okay, yeah, I can see that with the humunculus. And and stuff. Yep. But this one, I also see like we were, we've been talking over and over and over again about how expensive these cards are. Yeah, this finds you lands to play them. But it's just a jump blocker. It is, but at the same time, it still you know can jump something and yeah, can I find mean, you it, the it, lands. it is good. It helps you find the gates too, which is yes, it helps one. you find your fixes, especially if you want to play four colors. This guy's really good. Right. Uh, but for the most part, uh, no, I, I guess it's good. I like this card a lot. I think this card is sweet. You can't be hyper aggressive with other strategies with it though. When I you're agree. Drafting it's it's a it's a sealed all star. Sealed All-Star in draft, it's good. Yeah. In constructed, it's a maybe. Yeah. It's a maybe. We're still in the maybe phase for any constructed deck that's going to use a card like that. Mm -hmm. That That's a card you really can't call. It's either going to really work or it's really not. I agree with that. So, Gobbly News, five mana, three, three. <laughs> what? Is that like a guy only put a 1-1 one, one counter on it? Aw. That's so eh. I mean, I guess if you're making tokens and you're populating them. Yeah. But you don't want to do that, though. 
I don't feel like I, I want to like give this up. Card. Even if I were, even if I just had to give up a bird, you know, yeah, like a one. It flies. Yeah, it's got evasion, and this thing don't. It can and, be scary when they have to like block, and they don't know you can sack a bunch of guys. But for five mana for through three, it's pretty meh. Right. I mean, I guess if you're looking at the Golgari aspect of it, I mean, you get them in the graveyard to scavenge, maybe. But like, that's a terrible value. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, this is the kind of card that I'm gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna keep the jury out on it until I play it, and then I play it once I'm like, it's bad. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. It's fine. I yeah. mean, it might surprise all of us, but I'm pretty sure it's not no. going to. Not super good in any format. Aerial Predation. Get you. Right. I, I don't mind this. Like, green... I like how you gain life on top of yeah, it. Yeah, green has a tough time dealing with flyers sometimes, and this can this deals with it. Like, I like this card. Yeah, there's the insult. It's insult. a really sweet art. There's the injury. It's really sweet art, too. That's cool. It's, yeah. it's going to get you. It's, it's going to get you. Get you. Rawr! It's yeah, cool. It's, it is really good. Yeah, but in, in limited, yes. And we, I, I think the, the problem, like right now, particularly in constructed, is that crushing vines exists. Yeah, crushing vines is just way better. <laughs> crushing vines is just infinitely better because it's like this spell and something else. You lose the two life, but and okay. if you want something to kill something in the air, just go with the eaten by spiders. It's still the sweetest oh. creature removal ever. Oh. <laughs> it's the scariest name ever. No, and Axe Bang Guardian. And here, here is here's your mill deck. Here's the mill deck, or here's the way that you produce a bunch of mana to get your like big spells out. True. You grab him for the extra mana, you play him. It's your five color finder, green deck. Right? Yeah, you play the gate finder and him. Gate finder, <laughs> Aspen Guardian. See, I couldn't remember if this card was. Out of the sky. I, from the beginning of the set review, I would have said so, a couple things, but I forgot if he was common or rare. <laughs> I uh -huh. couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he's not rare. I uh, certainly don't think he, he's worth that much. But there there is certainly some themes, you know, really mm -hmm. subtle, you know, defender themes that, yeah. that that do exist thanks to this guy. Yeah, and he can get to six mana very quickly with like a wall and this card. And I definitely think he's good on his own just to get you to those mana drops. Right. He's just mana excel in the early turns, plus he's a decent defender. Yeah, an o, an O3 for three, like, I think the Gate Creeper Vine and, and the Axe Bane Guardian work so well together that, you know, they're going to be able to power out these ridiculously expensive things. And fix your splashes. Yep. Yeah. Do, do both. Yeah, so, I like it. Awesome, awesome limited card. Yeah. Uh, Brush Strider? It's, it's, it's so uh, weird, and I don't like it. I don't like Vigilance 3 ones. I don't like Vigilance on an X1. Like, yeah. It just feels bad, because, like... Okay, it's still going to die to anything ever. Yeah, it's cute, but like if they literally have anything untapped, it's more, more than likely just going to kill this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this guy, even though he's an uncommon. I do like how he trades up. I think yes, he, he will does trade up. He yeah. will. He will trade with three drops and four drops. That's what that mm -hmm. means when I trade up. My two mana guy will trade for a three or four or five mana guy. Yes, because of his high power level. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. And if it's an empty board, I can imagine you'll just sort of get in there. But more than likely, he might just be a three-one defender for all intents and purposes. But he doesn't have Defender to help us with our other guys. Oh! He's just like a weird... We have to attack with him just so... Deer thing. We don't feel bad when we're trying to add a bunch of mana with our Defender. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will feel bad about it. But yep. not, not good in Constructed, but in Limited, I think it's not that bad. No. Yeah, it's, ve it's very good in Limited, I think. Okay. Centaur's Herald. Love this card. This card's cool. This card's value. Block, make a 3-3. Three, three. It's more tokens to populate. Like, yes. You get to protect your... Beast, so the turn that you populate, the turn before you populate, you make a 3-3, three, three, they're tapped out, then you get to populate it, make another 3-3. Three, three. Yep. I, I really like this card. I like this card a lot. This is one of those cards that just let, it sort of saves you a turn. And you think about it, it is a four mana hill giant. Mm -hmm. But you can play it on turn one. But it lets you sort of suspend yep. the other half of it. You can mm -hmm. play this on turn one, you can wait a bit, you can chump block, and then yep. before damage, you just make a 3-3, three, three, you populating. Like, it's, there's a lot of cool things with this it's, card. It is way, 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 way better yep. than a two colors green, green, 3-3. Three, three. But oh, if yeah. you're afraid of it dying, just play it as a play it as that. Play it on turn four yeah. with three mana up. Chump block, make a 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Keep it in line, keep it in mind. Yep. Chorus of Might. A four mana instant until in the turn target creature gets plus one plus one. Well, for I each think this is control. how we get our guy trampled and populate. We. I, I like this card. I think it'll be real. <coughs> see a little bit of play because it is seeds of strength was a super powerful card yeah. in time spiral, and now you get the same thing that costs a little bit more, but with like populate and a bunch of token strategies. So this card can easily just finish a game. I like this a lot. Yep, I agree. This is one of those like game finishers that needs Combo to exist. Combo kill you. Yep, absolutely. It just makes me think it gains life somehow. It looks like Stream of Life so much. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Gain yeah, all the life. All of it. Oh. All right, man. So Death's Presence. This is a limited ridiculous bomb. Yeah. 
Like you play this thing, and in response, they're going to kill absolutely everything they can because everything after it is going to make your guys insane. Yeah, it's like, oh, so my two two dies, and I'll put two counters on this three three. Oh, my five five now that's now a five five dies. And so I put five counters on this one one. So now the six six dies, and, and I'll just make this guy a thirteen thirteen. Like. Every, everything stays alive. All the power stays on your board. You can't get rid of all the power until you have no guys left. Right. It just it, they, it just keeps ping ponging essentially, yeah. like to all your guys until you just have like this one massive crazy dude. And hopefully he can trample. Yeah. <laughs> jump, jump, jump. Oh, and then you just lose to flyers. But no, Death's Presence is one of those cards that you know the the card that lets you sack guys to put a counter on it. Yeah. That's cute ooh, with it. Right. Ooh. It's cool. Like so, okay. if you open a rare, then you play right. the uncommon. Over the rare, the <laughs> in the uncommon. big set, so you're probably not going to see the uncommon. Right, of course. Yeah, and they work so well together when these crazy <laughs> things happen. And that's fine, but ultimately, I think it's more of a casual card. Yeah. It's going to be a limited all-star. It's going to be EDH all-star. You know, being able to just, you know, get raw value out of your guys mm -hmm. dying is always a good thing. And no constructive uses, but, you know, certainly has its place, and I'm glad it exists. Giant Growth. Wow, I, I'm so impressed that they made Giant Growth in a... In a non core set, yeah, it was just when I saw it, I'm like, what? Uh -huh. uh, you're not, you're not allowed here. No, you get out. Giant spider didn't come along. You can't either. You're done. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Giant growth, however, I think the art's cool. By the way. It I, is very cool. I yeah. love the art. Like, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's like the giant squirrel giant growth or whether the yeah. giant squirrel giant uh, strength or whatever it is, but like the... Um, See, or Might of Oaks. Might of Oaks, thank yep. you. But, you know, the, there's the, the idea of sort of getting across size is always something the artists I know sort of struggle with of like, how can I sort of show beyond just like <laughs> little dude, huge dude, a, a way to, to encompass and size. And that's really sweet where that's everyone's really just like, oh, wow, what's going on here? Beautiful, subtle way of doing so. Now, mm -hmm. giant growth by itself, classic magic card, mm -hmm. bread and butter. First time I've used that phrase. Oh, oh week. yeah, that is. It's ah, the first time. This is a bread and butter magic card. Yeah, it it's is. good. It's good to have in a in a core set. Like, yep. it's good to have in this set. Like, just having a pump spell for cheap that can mm -hmm. like help trade with guys it is awesome. Yeah, mana bloom. How does this card work? I love this card. I don't know how it's good though. Oh. I want it to be so good, but I don't understand. No it's good in knows. enchantress. It's good in enchantress, right? And like, is it? Maybe. Maybe. What I like the most about it and what I think is cool about it is that is two things. A, you can use it every turn. That means on their turn, you can get a free mana out of sure, it. Sure, yeah, yeah. B, it's going to come back to your hand. That's mm -hmm. like, it, it's not just like this one shot thing. It just like keeps giving cool stuff. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, yes, I agree for two mana, Farseek is better. But when you're able to sink some mana in this thing, you're able to get you're, like you have to give up an extra turn. But you have to give up an entire turn, and you're not getting extra value out of it because every mana you, you're losing a mana every time you cast this card. Mm -hmm. You know, so like you have to find the time, the tempo sure. lost to actually put this into play, and then do something powerful. So I don't think it's good. Yeah, and in a world of tempo, it's just if, no. If it generated mana, that would be cool, but it doesn't actually generate mana because right. you're investing into that same amount. Right, you're getting exactly out what you put into it. Minus one green every time. Minus one green, and it's just ah, uh, I just felt like it was right there. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't think it'll see play though. Yeah, it, for me it was like it's going to be either really good or really bad. It could, and, and it still could be really good. We just <clears> have <throat> to know how what happens with the format. We don't know what the format is going to look like. So. Right. We don't know what standard looks like. W what I'm curious about is that in limited, is this guy good? I think this is a pretty cool card in limited. Oh. It's pretty cool. Like you're talking about this five mana deck thing or the four color deck thing. How would this not go right in there? Because. You don't know. It's like the commons. You're building around it. I don't think you want to start the your game off with a mana bloom. I'm not saying you want to start it off per se. Like you know, you play the the gate the gate creeper vine thing because it only gives like an extra boost of mana. Where like the defender, may, maybe maybe. All I'm saying is it's sort of an accelerant. It's sort of a fixer, and yeah. it returns to your hand when it's done. It doesn't just die. If it just died, I think it would be absolutely terrible. Well, it does because limited at the late game, you don't have any more cards in your hand, so you're just dead because it doesn't do anything. It's an extra spell over a land and fine. Can't block. Oak Street Innkeeper. This card's so cool. <laughs> uh, as long as it's not your turn, tap creatures you control have hexproof. Like, it's such a weird ability. Like, it's so flavorful, though. You know, yeah. they're tired, they're sleeping. She's watching over you. It's yep. cool. <laughs> Ain't gonna get hurt in my end. Keeping you protected. I it's like even if I'm awake, can I just hang out in there? Is it <laughs> Wi-Fi? I'll yeah. just chill for a little bit. <laughs> this is there Celestia Wi-Fi? Yeah. I need to know this. <laughs> uh, playability? Yeah, in limited. Think so? 
I mean, if, if three mana one two is what's like, eh. yeah, but it's it stays back and then it like forces the removal on that. There's a lot of sorcery speed removal, hmm. and they all have hexproof, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's fair, but you also have to attack with those creatures in order to give them the hexproof or tap them in some way. We'll see. I don't right. know yet. This one I feel eh. because it's uncommon. I think it, it, it. I feel like it's one that I will test for wizards. Uh, for me, I'll, yeah, yeah. For me, I, I feel like that it it looks neat, and that I think I want to try it and not like it. It could happen. But I hope the other. I hope the opposite happens. I always do. Rumble, rubble back, Rhino. Rubble back. Rubble, 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 rubble. <laughs> rubble, 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 rubble. So the Hamburglar's own great creature, the Rubble, rubble. Uh, the five mana, three, four hexproof. Now, uh, uh, Andrea Schubert, I spoke about earlier this week, uh, she said that this felt like a 4 4 in development. That was too good, so they made it a 3 4. Yeah. That for sounds sure. about right. Like, you know, they were just like, yeah, five mana, four, four hexproof, sure. And, and then they were just, just like, like mm. <laughs> Yeah, they had a 3 3 really before, good. so they wanted to make a bigger one. I don't know if we can stop <laughs> this with scavenge. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is so good with scavenge. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to do some work. Yeah, this card is, I mean, it's very good. Like, it, you'll, it'll see a ton of play. In limited, this will be an yes. absolute monster constructed now. Savage Surge, two mana. Finally, green gets another. Yay. Spider grasp. I love spider grasp. Spider grasp. It doesn't right. have reach, which kind of sucks, but it is a mana cheaper. Right, as it should be, and yeah. it just lets you sort of surprise kill one of your yep. uh, opponent's best guys. Why doesn't it populate? Uh, what? <laughs> That'd be <laughs> the most sweet card ever. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it would be insane. Um, but yeah, this is one of those cards that's just going to eat one of your your opponent's guys, whether they're yep. blocking or whether they're coming at you. You know, it's hard to play around this card all the time. It is yeah. uncommon for that very reason. Yeah, Savage Surge is like really awesome. I think it's a great pump spell. Yep, and limited, not constructed, but in limited, it's yeah. terrific. Seek of the Horizon coming back from Saviors. Yeah, I think this card is going to see a lot more play, like. After a while, people are going to ignore it. They're going to try to do their curve, but then you need your land drops to hit all these big spells. Yeah, it's and less turn new. four. There's not a lot. If you're not green black, there's not a ton to do on turn four. Actually, yeah. I mean, and the uh, you know, if you're powering out like the defender mm -hmm. who adds mana to your mana pool or whatever, you know, like Seek the Horizon was a re is a reprint from Savers of Kamigawa and it was a really cool card in that limited environment, and is is probably way better here because it's fixing all of your mana and, and the, ultimately and the like, curve goes way up. Yeah, it lets you cast all these stupidly expensive things that we keep going on and on about. Out of being and these so guild mage, and these guild mages. Yeah, ooh, it's gonna do some work with that guild mage. Yeah, I think Seek the Horizon is very good. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't know about eh, constructed. No. <laughs> if it went into play. Yeah. Now slime molding. That's love a cool it. card. I love this card because it can do whatever. If you need a three, three, four, four, that's fine. Right. It's always gonna be weaker than the mana investment. Obviously. But it's whatever you ever need. Okay. So you can just make this huge monster and then start populating if that's what you do. Yay. It's like when do I want to start populating? Well, I want to start on six, so we're going to make a 4-4. Four, four. Right, make a 4-4 four, four, and then populate, populate, populate. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I drew too many populate cards. I'll just play this on turn four and then make three threes. Yeah. I, just, I, I love slime molding. You should pick them up early if you're trying to play Celestia. Just because you're going to want the flexibility this card gives you, right? If you're and if, if you're drafting, as sort of he's speaking about, if you're drafting yeah. and you're like, man, I, or or if you're sort of already in Celestia, you pick this card really highly. Yeah. It's an uncommon for a reason. It's in a big set. So you're not going to get to see a lot of them. Yeah, you force the popular. This card will do all the work you want it to. Super, super good. I really like it. Uh, Towering Indrik. Guess what? Yeah, this is my spider. Really, you couldn't just give us giant spider. It's cool. Like. It's it's not like we hate classic cards, you know what I mean? Like it's okay. And, and matter of fact, just like we're you know we we like giant growth in here. Why can't we just have like giant spider in here? Because the other spider ate the giant spider. That's what they're gonna say. Giant spider, giant spider. Whatever. It's just like a big horse now. Yeah. Why? How and is this horse fighting birds? It does not look like it's winning. Yeah. It's just like I just, it's just, just get out of here. This, you <laughs> hurt. Yeah. It's like it's like the flies and it can't use its tail. Right. It can't do anything. I, okay. It makes no sense how this has reach. I don't like it. Just give us back Giant Spider, guys. It's yeah. cool. Urban Burgeoning. Okay. <laughs> this now, this is a, now straight up probably the worst card in the set. Like, this card is at least, the goggles. At least it's better than giving, like, Gain 3 Life and Forest Walk or whatever. The bad, the worst. Green always has, like, the worst the enchantment worst ever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this has the dumbest thing. Oh, yeah, that one with three Gain 3 Life and it's Forest Walk. Okay, now do you want to know why this could be sweet? Go on. You put it on your underworld, underworld connections. connections. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Yeah, you do. Combo. Card's <laughs> sweet. You wait. You wait. It's okay. You don't have to like it right now. Now, Wild Beastmaster, she's she's cool. 
I yeah, like her. I like, she's, I like her. she's the card where I would think I would be super excited to play the creatures you control are indestructible populate because, yeah, you want her to live more turns than one. Well, but you have to make her big, too. Well, what I'm saying is she'll be indestructible, so... That's fine, but you still have to make her bigger, so she's not just a glorious anthem. Uh, that's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, you yeah. want to want to pump her in some form of fashion um, before you attack. Yeah, yeah. For what it's worth, you can't do it like after you swing and you pump her and it does all the stuff. No, yeah, no, no, no. You pump her before, then you attack, then you get all the cool bonuses, which is sweet. Yeah. But for a card, I, I like. I feel it. like this is the kind of card that you don't need to wild defenses. You just have to like rancor, and then they're dead. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, plus you don't three, have to work three. too hard for it. No. I don't think it's going to be good and constructed, though. Oh, no. No, it's just not. Mm. Exa oh, not exalted. <laughs> 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 Worst exalted <laughs> usage oh, ever. Never, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, man. But uh, ultimately, I, I, I like the design of the card. I think the it design is, is cool. Yeah. I think in limited, you're going to find that you sort of hold your pump spells, you know, your your giant growths or whatever. If there was ever a huge. quote that I would want from that, I would be like, "There are brave men at our gates. Now let's go kill them." Raw. All right, you'll never take our freedom. All right, world spine worm. Eleven mana. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right, trample. the coolest thing you do with this card is unbarrel. Nope, you can't. Okay, it sucks. Nope. It's, what? No, it doesn't suck. It's awesome. And, okay, Legacy, you can show and tell it. And, yeah. And you can, uh, or more importantly, you can... Uh, you can't, though. You can sneak and show it. There's a way better 15-15 in that format. Way better. Yeah. That's our problem. Now, what isn't our problem is that beyond limited, because it's like a bajillion mana and you're never going to cast it, Unless don't do have, it. No, the defender deck. If if you okay if you draft the defender deck maybe what no you have to uh, I mean you got to sort 15, of 15 15 for trample man. I know you, you got to go for it I'm not saying you don't go for it I'm just saying like if you're not doing that specific deck and you don't get this like you know pass to you this is not going to work in any other way no it's not going to work in standard it's not going to work in any other no. format in that regard if you're back in legacy you're just going to use Emrakul yeah this is a card that was built for kitchen tables. It was built for EDHs. It was built for people who just like to play the fatty boom booms. And for that, it works. I, I, for, I mean, you know, when you look at it, it's a super cool card. It is very It's a 15-15 awesome. that just like splits. Yeah. And that's awesome. But beyond that, that's what we got. Yeah. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Now, next up, we're going to run into all of the artifacts, <sighs> of which we have seven. And our first is Chromatic Lantern. It's my favorite. So when they spoiled this card, I was in mini ups for the open because a lot of the cards, like throughout this weekend, I'm telling you, they was all spoiled that weekend. Sure. And I was actually playing a five color control deck mm -hmm. with uh, the the artifact that when it comes to play, you remove a card from the graveyard and it adds one of any color. Oh gosh, that's from Innistrad. Wasn't yeah, or no, from uh, Abyssin Restored. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. La la yeah, whatever it was. I whatever don't remember it was. what it's called. But this is ten times better than that. And I was like, oh, I feel embarrassed for myself. <laughs> this card is sweet. I know. I ordered one from iCube. Like, yeah, it's, it's very Coalition Relic esque. And that card is amazing. Yeah. And Chromatic Lantern is just. More this is better than Coalition Relic, right? No. Because that adds a. That can charge. Add two. Yeah, it lets you add two. It lets you go from three to five. Yeah. Or three to six. Six, yeah. Which is insane. Um, but this will still let you go from three to five. And But what it does do is it shows enable like some five color control something or other yeah um it'll be amazing in edh oh my lord like these foils are gonna be worth like a bajillion dollars like now they're everyone already everyone needs one yeah they're already up to like 16 17 bucks for the foil it's gonna be like 30 after yeah. they rotate and go out of print uh and every cube like is going to want this because you want those five color or multicolor archetypes to exist and yeah i'm just super enthused about this card <laughs> this card is very good and i want to build a deck for it but i have to play with my zombies because i'm going with my gut this is one of those cards that like if you look through, his, uh, through the history of magic of like mana fixing and mana sort of rocks or yeah. whatever, whether it's signets or whether it's, you know, uh, coalition relics or whatever, you know, prismatic lenses, just like over time, they just kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and like, here we are. Yeah. To the point where like, not only does this tap for mana, it, all of your lands tap yeah. for whatever. <laughs> no drawback, doesn't come into you play tap. You get any color and you get any color and you get any color. It's the Oprah of mana. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> The Oprah of Mana, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's terrific in all formats. You play it in limited, go for it, because it helps you just play everything. Yeah. Uh, Civic Saber. Okay. 
Okay. It's so okay. weird. It's just it's like just if it, if it gave plus one plus one for every color and it costs like two to play two to equip, I'd like it more. Okay. But just because it doesn't help out with toughness, yeah. I don't really like equipment that do that. Like it is as cheap as a bone splinters, but I mean plus I, I or mean, scimitar or something. Bone splitter. Bone splitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so. Well, it, you want it to be, but that, the problem is that like that's about as good as it can get right yeah. now. That's as literally as good as it can get. You I mean, the hope, double striker. You can hope it's a bone splitter. Yeah. Okay. That card wasn't like unbelievably terrific no. in limited, and it's not in, in, in constructed either. Mm -hmm. And you're just, I mean, it might be like a twenty third card in limited. Yeah. If you have a heavy multicolor sort of aspect of your deck, but mm -hmm. even then, man, I don't think you're gonna be excited no. about it. It's just not that powerful. Yeah. Codex Shredder, Shredder rather. It's the, it's the weirdest card ever. This is a really weird yeah, card. I don't, and like that art is so random. Like, yeah, I don't even know what's going on. I think that's supposed to be like a paper shredder. Yeah, it's called a Codex Shredder, so I really feel like it's like the old school office machine that went evil. It went <laughs> rogue. Oh it just God. had enough. It's like the office space fax machine. Yeah. Like it, man, yeah, it, it just, got mad. It just got pissed off. <laughs> nar, 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 nar. <laughs> and then just five mana return this like, card no, to what, your hand. What happened? What happened is they destroyed the fax machine. Right with the with the baseball bats. Doctor Who's mm. time machine destroyed it and fell on top of it. Right. So the TARDIS came back. The I TARDIS came back. Yep. Saved the world. All right. It came with it because it got stuck underneath it. Okay. It learned the ways of the. Scary robots. We've been way too deep on this. No, we're going all the way. Oh god. The scary robots. What are they called? The uh, the di dialects. Yeah, the dialects. It taught the the fax machine the the ways of the dialects, and then they sent it to the magic world, and now we have a codex shredder. I feel worse for hearing that entire thing. I feel amazing. I feel like less of a human being. Kill, kill, kill. Uh, oh, maximum deletion. All right, so <laughs> Codex Shredders, can you just tell me how good this card in Limited is? What? That's the, I just told you a story. We're going to pass. Jesus, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Pithy Needle is back. Pithy Needle was a $20 card in Savers of Kamigawa. Yeah. It was a Chase Rare. It was one of the only two, sorry. Um, because Kataki and Pithy Needle and cards that cost 12 million mana that no one yep. liked. Um, but Pithy Needle was a force. It was amazing. I remember like opening Pithy Needles in packs and just being like, super excited because it was like the coolest yes. thing ever. It just stopped all the things you didn't want to happen. You know, suppose, like with Kataki and Pithy Needle, you could stop, stop Arcbound Ravager and stuff. And that was just the coolest thing ever. And nowadays we have Planeswalker, so it's even more sort of interesting. We have Phyrexian Revoker, which is leaving us. So this sort of still gives you that artifact answer to an activated ability problem. All right, back in the day, almost every card had a very, very useful activated ability. So if you pithy needled it, it was worthless, completely okay. worthless. Okay. Goblin Sharpshooter, Goblin Siege Gang, Skit, uh, the, the, the Goblin 3 3 Beast guy that you could sack and give him plus two, plus two, and trample. You know, those weren't in standard when this was printed, right? Wasn't it? Uh uh. Goblins and Affinity? Uh, or, or, Affinity? Oh, just printed in Kamigawa? Yep. Okay, well, let's let's go forward. Uh, da, 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 sorry, da, 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 da. sorry. Affinity was there. Affinity was you there. You could stop Ravager. You could stop a lot of these things. Okay. Uh, you could stop GTA. You could stop Sakura Tribe Elder, I guess, if you wanted to. Sure. But, like, right now, a lot of the activated abilities, besides a couple Planeswalkers, are they're fine to kill, but they're you don't good. really have to. I mean, Umazawa's Jite was the thing for a while, right? Yeah. That was in Betrayer, it, it, so that was a cool thing to stop. Too. It stopped Top, which is hugely annoying. People didn't really catch on to Top. For what it's worth, like, Top is now like a $15 uncommon or whatever. Yeah. But back in the day, not a lot of people ran it. And really? Yeah, I yeah. Ran a lot of it. Oh, that was. I mean, it was. It really was sort of revolutionary yeah. to run top with Bob. I know it sounds mm -hmm. silly, but at the time, it was just like no one ran top ever. No one understood how good top was. Well, once and the moment Bob came around, top Bob counterbalance was a thing until it, it rotated. Right. Well, it got there. I mean, and then counterbalance sort of became yeah. a thing too. And even that was rogue. Even mm -hmm. that was just like you know, can counterbalance and top work because both yeah. of those cards don't do anything, mm -hmm. right? That was the thinking. So. Ultimately, I love what Pith and Needle does. I love how it is sort of that safety valve for the format of something that has an activated ability from getting out of hand. Um, and also that your opponent sort of has to answer it if they want their coolest activated ability yeah. to work. So in many ways, it's a cool card. It's not near as expensive. It's like a $2 card now instead of a $20 yeah. card. It's been reprinted a couple times. Um, but in the world of Planeswalkers, I love that it, is, that it exists, and I can imagine oh, yeah, it's going to no, be well. Oh, yeah, no, it's going to be very good if your deck is weak to Tamiya or Jace. Like, yep. Or Liliana. I think it yep. will see play in decks that can't beat these cards. Sure. 
But I don't think there's going to be any decks that can't beat these cards. Well, I think it's going to be few and far between, and it's one of those cards that I'm glad exists, but I don't feel it's going to make yeah. a much of an impact in any I way. just can't wait till you name Swamp. Why? Other World Connections. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and your Underworld Connections, I swear. Just, you just like to troll me. So, Street Sweeper. Is it's the best. It's the best name of any card ever. <laughs> It's so good. This it's so ability, random. This ability is the best ability any magic card has ever had. Oh my god. Please let For the third set. For the ability set. and the name, uh. think about this. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. When I saw this card, I laughed for 30 minutes straight. And uh. I'm not even kidding. Look at the art. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just a bunch of like brooms and like <laughs> it's zoom. The most crazy machine What is ever. happening here? I hope the third set is all like land auras and this card is like insane because it's this so what is it doing? No, this is wizards trolling us so yes, badly. Yes, we are literally actively being trolled right now <laughs> by like street the street sweeper. sweeper. <laughs> street sweeper attacks destroy all auras attached to target. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> that's going to matter. You know that's going to matter at some point. <laughs> the like, last time we've had a Pro six Tour Top 8, there's going to be this stupid street sweeper that destroys Underworld Connections or that thing that prevents the damage, and it's just going to break it wide open. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's so good. As a as a 6-mana 4-6, six, it's not the most unplayable thing in the world. Yes, it is. It's not that bad. It's very bad. Okay, it's not that great. <laughs> All right, fine. Volatile Rig, now this thing is friggin' random. This, <laughs> yeah. what the hell? <laughs> what is going on here? What did you do? <laughs> I, really? What? What? If it's dealt damage, you flip coins. If it dies, you flip coins. <laughs> what? There has no. to have been some market research that was just like, more coin flipping in magic. Look at the art. Like, I don't even know what it's, it's doing. It's like a face with a helmet with another body inside of it. It's like... A what? I don't know. And why does it have a person attached? Yeah, a little tiny person. A dude guy. Oh. It's so weird. This card... I just feel like this is the biggest head scratcher to pull out of a pack of Return to Ravnica. Like, this is your rare. What? At least a Street Sweeper was uncommon. I mean, this is an awesome rare, man. Mm-hmm. You have to kill it before it does anything bad, right? No. Uh, if it's dealt damage in any way, you flip a coin. Okay, so if you're Luis, it doesn't die. <laughs> yes. Okay. If you're Luis, it'll die. And then if die. it does die, you want it to die, and then you kill everything. I, I guess you play it in standard, or not in standard. I guess you play it in limited, right? Maybe? I don't know. It depends on what deck you have. I have no idea. I just never want to open this card ever. I never want to I never want to attack with this card, but it makes you. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you attack. You don't even you don't even play it. You just put it in your sideboard and it just shows up in your hand. You're like, well, don't like, oh, stop it. Oh, stop oh. it. You put it your sideboard and it's back. Oh. Then you leave the pre-release and go home and play an M13 draft and it's just there. No. Like, oh. no. You pull back your covers and it's there. Oh. <laughs> go home. Tablet of the Kills. I, I really like this this land or this this art. It's very stoic. I just I love the art. I'm you know what man? I know it's weird, but if I think that if there's a Turbo Fog deck, that this might be a card in it. And we've broke <laughs> Evan Irwin. We need to we need to stop <laughs> the show. We have broke him. If this is a Turbo Fog deck, we play this <laughs> card so you can gain a life. What? What? It's just one of the most powerful life gaining artifacts that has ever been printed. Now, the bar is low, okay? I get it. The bar is low. Don't look at me like that. It really is. Think of all the Lucky Charms artifacts and look at this thing. It's you cast, though. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not as good as the Lucky Charms. The black one in Black That's... Mirrors and Limited was actually playable. Well, and the red one also was a thing mm -hmm. in, in Mirrors, too. I get it. Like, But, uh, yeah, all right. Those are fine. more powerful. I'm trying to make it work. Trying to make what work? The, okay, the, wait, what work? This, make is this, like, work? this is like the fourth time we've done this. If the card sucks, we just talk about the flavor and make up ridiculous stories about Oprah. Okay, Oprah. All right, man. Tablet of the Guilds is cool. The artwork. Yeah, terrific. the arts. I, I want to make terrific. it my background. Can we? We're just gonna keep going on with this artwork. <laughs> All right, it's great. It's great. Tell, Do you tell, know what's really cool? It, it shows you what the other guilds look like because we've <gasps> never seen them before. No, we have no idea yeah. what those things look like. I do like the flavor text though. It is really sweet that it the Azorius paid an exorbitant amount, so it appear at the top. 
<laughs> that's sweet. It's like yeah. the Azorius cares about branding. It does, yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as, a, as a marketer, uh, I can appreciate yeah, it. So that's we, really have, cool. we have two, two lands. lands. Yeah, two. We have two cards, ladies and gentlemen, until we're all done, okay? <gasps> oh, no. Oh, my God. Transgale Promenade. Rapture Spire. Rapture Spire. Rapture Spire. Rapture Spire. You want to know a good story about Rapture Spire? Rapture Spire. You want to hear a sweet story? Okay. At my first Pro Tour, Rupture Spire is the same thing as this land, which is a very good land and limited. You'll play it if you play a bunch of colors, but that's all we have to say. It's not good and constructed. Yep. But I'm playing, and I play against uh, someone round two after I lost to Luis at my first Pro Tour. Okay. And I Realm Razor him. And then he kills it after the lands come back. Okay. But he had three Rupture Spires. And oh! Died. And then he never got to cast his Cruel Tomatum, and I killed him. <laughs> Yeah, what up? Yeah, you liked that, didn't you? It was like actual half Armageddon for him because wow. we all picked up our lands, came back, but all his died, he forgot about it. That's awesome. <sighs> Way to think ahead. But, yeah. All right, man. So, Transgo Promenade, I think it's cool. I think it's going to go certainly in the more than two color decks. You know, when, yes. when you want to splash, like you opened a bomb or something, and you need to want you want to use yeah, it. Yeah, you don't sure. want to play it in every deck. It's, it is a little weak. Now, I pre-ordered this next card. I pre-ordered Rogue's Passage. I did for my cube because it just it's a really interesting card. It's not interesting at all. It's interesting. It takes the interesting out of magic. No, it doesn't. You and this interesting lack of interesting because it's unblockable. I think that's cool. But it takes interesting things away from magic. It gives you the, the choice. The board is complex Four and then mana. your opponent plays this. Yeah. And then the game is not interesting anymore. No, the board just gets less complex. <laughs> it's less interesting. Now, if you say so. The, the, the comp complexity is not necessarily the only thing that people find interesting about magic. I know that. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I disagree. But I but have the camera on me, oh. so I can say it. You can say it if you want. Like I was like, and again, this for me, this is a card that's made because stalls can't last forever, and they want to give you tools to make sure the card, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the boards don't go on forever. I completely agree. I found like if, for example, I've played in I've I've played in bad cubes. Like I've mm -hmm. played in cubes that are not good. And the cubes that are not good usually don't have cards like these in them. They don't have ways for the game to end. Oh, and I like so those you'll just cubes. I mean, it's cute for a while, but it literally like uh, like the third match in, I was totally tired of it. Yeah. Because it's just like I play a guy, they play a guy and dot 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 and we're just like staring at each other and no one can break the stalemate because everything is kind of even, but the first person who attacks, you know, the first person who blinks just loses. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's terrible. That's not good magic for me like, you know, mm -hmm. and this is the type of card that makes them do something. It makes you, yeah. you know, make a move because if you just sit there, this thing is going to kill you. And that's what I like the most about that card. I do think it can seek some constructive play if a, if there's ever a mono-colored aggressive deck. Right. I could see like playing one or two. Yeah, it's a onesies, uh, twosies. But it's, it's a card probably a that, onesie. Yeah, but it's a card that, you know, again, it, it'll end the game. Yeah. And, that's and I oh, like I do not, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see this come down against guys. No! I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh my gosh, this ain't Traffic Rogue's Pad, it's going to be sweet. You know what else this ended? The set review. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why is it over? Why Dude, is it over, Evan? Why can't we be here forever? Because of reasons. Oh, because of like, life. Life? Life. I don't have one. I can stay here. <laughs> they just kicked me out. Yeah, yeah. We're just knocking him out of here. He sleeps outside. It's okay. We don't talk about it. It's kind of awkward. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Evan Irwin. I'm Brad Nelson. And we were here with you the whole time, all week, talking to you about Return to Ravnica. I thought it was, I just think this is a terrific set. I do too. My, I, my favorite moments in life are when I sit here and talk about magic cards with you. It's awesome, man. Non-ring. Yes, that's good, because that still is kind of awkward. It hurts. <laughs> my hair hurts so bad. It did. My bone vibrated. Uh, my it was bone really hurts. weird. All right, guys. Uh, I w again, I want to thank you guys for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Brad. Thank you, Evan. It's Thanks, a pleasure buddy. to be with you, too. And I'll tell you what, guys. You will see us again in three months where, we'll, where we will be talking about Gate Crash. Yes. All the other guilds. <sighs> it's going to be sweet. There's five more of them. Boros be and sweet. please let us Boros sweep, sweep some sweet. streets. Sweep the streets. <laughs> sweep the streets. Sweep the streets. We'll see you guys next time. Until next time. I've said next time too many times. Until we see you again. This is Evan Irwin for Brad Nelson tapping the cards. So you don't have to because you're beautiful and I don't want you to lift a finger.